We had good news out of Iran. Uh, we were doing negotiations with them. They've been somewhat successful. In fact, we already have a six-month pact uh, where uh, they have basically uh, agreed to our demands on their uranium enrichment and we've eased sanctions a little bit. And we're on the road to an even bigger deal with Iran where we would avoid war and we would, in essence, end their nuclear program. Now, you know, whether they're going to do any kind of nuclear energy is part of what the negotiations are about, but they would be inspected and certainly not be allowed to go anywhere near a nuclear weapons program, which right now they don't have, but we're looking to stop it before they get there. Okay, so things look like they're progressing along nicely. So, of course, what do we want to do? We want to screw it up. So here come the senators. Uh, Senator Bob Menendez from New Jersey and Mark Kirk from Illinois are leading this effort. They'd like to pass a resolution that might ruin the entire negotiations. Now it was made very clear during the negotiations that it would not help the process if the US Congress came in and said, we don't agree with the president, and what we'd like to do is to do further sanctions. Well, that's what we're negotiating over. That's what Iran would like to alleviate is those sanctions. So if they throw a monkey wrench right now, it could ruin the whole deal. And in fact, of course, that's exactly what they want. They, Bob Menendez, who's a Democrat, says, well, I'm trying to help the president. You know who's helping him is Chuck Schumer, another Democrat of New York. So we're trying to help the president. Well, you ask the president, and the president says, thanks, but no thanks. No, you're not helping me at all. I told you to butt out. Do not pass this resolution in the Senate. It's a really bad idea and could ruin our chance for peace. And Schumer and Kirk and... and and Menendez just go, oh, really? <laughs> oh, well, we're going to pass it anyway. And so they're progressing with it in the Senate. Now, it should be noted that Menendez and Schumer are among the top uh, recipients of AIPAC uh, money. AIPAC is, of course, the right-wing uh, Israeli lobbying group. But I am told that saying that the Israeli, Israeli lobby in America has power is unacceptable. Okay, you can deny the truth any way you like, but these guys who happen to get all this money, who happen to get all this backing from AIPAC, just magically decide to throw a monkey wrench into negotiations that Israel didn't want in the first place. And let's be more clear about that. It's not that all of Israel doesn't want it. Sensible people in Israel want it just as much as sensible people in America. The right wing of Israel and the right wing government of Israel don't want this, because like our right wing, they love war. And they think, oh, the only thing the Arabs understand, or the Persians in this case understand, is war and violence. So let's give them war and violence. Well, isn't that ironic? It appears, no, 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 it's the only thing you understand. So they'd like to ruin these negotiations. So let me uh, go to one of the top experts we have in the country uh, on Iran. It's Trita Parsi, he's the president of the National Iranian American Council. He's a scholar and he says, this would be a direct violation of the Geneva deal, which would cause the collapse of the talks, not due to Iranian sabotage, but American foul play. Now, he's an American who's an expert on Iran. And he's not reporting his opinion on it. He's telling you, look, this is the consensus of the world. We would seem like we were the bad guys. He continues, America would be at fault in the eyes of the world, which then would help Iran significantly weaken the international sanctions regime without Iran giving away any nuclear concessions. And in fact, he explains in more detail, and all the experts do, that Rouhani, the new leader of Iran, is trying to build a political capital so he can get the right wing of his country to agree to this deal. They hate the deal, they, they want war too. They don't want a peace deal. They want to say, yeah, we're gonna build nuclear weapons and we're gonna show the US. And so when you weaken Rouhani by spitting in the eye of this deal, you strengthen their right wing who want to build a nuclear weapon. How ridiculously counterproductive is that? But the thing is, it's counterproductive if you want peace. It's perfectly productive if you want war, and you're a right winger, the only thing you understand is violence and war, well, you think, well, that's what I'm going to drive towards. Now, what's the Iranian position on this? Their foreign minister, Javad Sarif, says that if they pass this in the Senate, it will, quote, mean that the entire deal is dead. We're so close to a negotiated agreement. So here comes the right wing to foul it up. But but APAC has no influence in Washington. Oh, those poor guys. I mean, what, the Israeli lobby? Oh, it's offensive to even mention it. What's offensive is what APAC drives our senators and congressmen to do all the time. There are actually plenty of uh, Israeli lobbies, 
and ones that represent Jewish Americans that are on the left side, that are, on the, that are moderates, okay, but APAC is not among them. I can't stand it when they equate APAC with lobbying for all of Israelis. No, they lobby for right-wing Israeli positions that love war just as much as right-wing Americans love it. And how's that war, all those wars turned out for us in the Middle East? Great, right? So you liked Iraq? Iran would only be a much, much larger war. 